through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 160. I'm Spencer. And I'm Greg. Today, in honor of That's My Boy, mm -hmm. the Adam Sandler, Andy Sandberg film, as we mentioned before, mm -hmm. we're talking about father-son movies. Mm -hmm. There's any number of relationships that yeah. can go therein. So we figured we'd cover a wide variety of mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start back a ways with 1972's The Godfather from yes. Francis Ford Coppola. This is the mafia film mm -hmm. that you probably have heard about. It might be a little famous. Mm -hmm. Based on a book. By, by Mario Puzo. Thank you. Series of books, I believe. Yeah. And this is about, you know, there are several sons. <laughs> you don't know what Godfather is right. about. <laughs> but there's, there's several sons here. There's yes. the the go-getter sort of family-oriented son, uh, James Kahn, mm -hmm. whose name is... Sonny. See, Sonny. Yep. yep. Good memory. There's Michael Al Pacino, mm -hmm. the one who's sort of resisting the family, wants to stay out of the problems there. Just got back, I think, from military service, right? Yep. yep. War. I think yeah. World War Two, maybe? I think... Maybe Korean yeah. War? One of those wars. I forget which war. Michael is his name, mm -hmm. and then of course you have uh, what's it called? It um, Fredo. Yes. The sort of God. dumb, the dumb brother that John sort of, Cassavetes. Yeah, right? yep, yep, yep. James Cassavetes. James. John. I don't. John Cassavetes. Yeah, yeah. It's not that. Yeah. But you have these three different relationships. Mm -hmm. The most important one, though, is Al Pacino yeah. and his dad, played by uh, Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. And Don Corleone. Yes. He's resistant to the family, but ultimately he's forced into it and in how he sort of adapts to being involved mm -hmm. versus his morals is sort of the ultimate story yeah. that's being told. It's kinda interesting how he you know in, in a lot of situations like this you have that where you have a familial responsibility that's passed on. He's totally resistant of it, but then, you know, not only does he just choose to start to accept it, but he fully embraces it and kind of starts embodying those elements of his father's legacy, kind of handing them directly down. Well, I mean, it's got that classic ending scene where, you know, he's in the, the par of his sort of father's office, mm -hmm. you know, talking to business associates, <laughs> and Diane Lane... Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton, sorry. Keaton, yeah. Definitely not Lane. <laughs> Diane Keaton's looking in towards him, because mm -hmm. she's his wife, I yeah. believe, at that yeah, point. Yeah, And they shut the door yeah. on her. That classic Just because they don't, yeah. don't want to give away the information. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of definitely interesting to think about, you know, the moral corruption that there is therein. Mm -hmm. It's a film that was, as I said, super beloved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it won Best Picture, Best Actor for Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. It won... All that <laughs> cotton in his mouth. <laughs> Dude, he won Best Writing for uh, an Adapted Screenplay mm. for Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola. Interestingly enough, it had three actors nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Hmm. James Caan, mm -hmm. Robert Duvall, and Al Pacino. Yeah, Duvall, definitely. I'm not, I'm not surprised at all that Duvall got But one. did you know that none, none of, of them, them won? won Ugh. Joel Grey won for Cabaret. Ah... Uh. I think huh. must have split the vote probably. Probably they're all they're all so good. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, how do you pick Robert? You know, you pick somebody over Robert Duvall in the same Jane movie. Al Pacino, exactly. Game they're all so good. So <laughs> it's it's kind of amazing to think about, and it's also sort of a shame that uh, Nina Rota's score was disqualified mm. for being uh, reused. Uh, the Fortunata score. Ah, uh, so. That's a shame because that yeah. score is so classic, yeah, so very memorable. Good score. The next one we're going to talk about is a couple decades later. Mm -hmm. Another uh, challenging relationship <laughs> between a father and son, you might Definitely. say. We're talking Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yes. The father son tandem here is Harrison Ford, is <laughs> mm -hmm. Indiana Jones, and his dad, Sean Connery, Professor Henry Jones. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of. A strained relationship would probably mm -hmm. be the best way to yeah, say it. Definitely. Though it's also one of those ones where it's like he doesn't want to be mm -hmm. his father, and yet at the same time he sort of is very yeah. similar to his father. And so, you know, he's sent on a quest to save his father mm -hmm. from the Nazis, basically. Yeah, basically. His dad's knowledge in the, yes, where the Holy is Grail being used be. for the Holy Grail, mm -hmm. and ultimately it sort of sends him on the quest to find the mm -hmm. Holy Grail as well. It's probably two of the best actors at that time i mean it was oh, an amazing yeah. combination it's still so good still holds up incredibly well 
You got back to the classic Indiana Jones versus the Nazis, which is always a more I successful. I don't pairing. even mind Temple of Doom so much. I, I don't know. dislike Temple of Doom, but it's hard to complain about Nazis. But versus yeah, Jones. Last Crusade is back in that kind of like returning to where Raiders of the Lost Ark had and religious icon, well Christian religious icons, and you know uncovering supernatural objects, that whole element. I mean, Temple of Doom kind of skirted outside of that slightly yeah, but true it's also interesting in this case especially as opposed to the godfather and godfather you kind of have like this set standard powerful figure of his father and this legacy that goes with it in yes. this case it's almost the inverse where it's like as far as he knows up until his father's kidnapped his father's kind of a crackpot mm -hmm. he's the weird lunatic friend who's obsessed with the lot of the crew yeah was it the, crus the crusades I, yeah no but he's obsessed with the uh with the what's the cup the holy grail the holy grail yes. he's obsessed with the holy grail yes yes and he's like this crazy almost conspiracy theory person when you see like indian jones grow his whole life to grow up and prove these things to be in retrospect to his father so it's yeah. even more interesting that indiana jones timeline life and henry jones timeline reconverge at this holy grail where it fits both their personalities and technically speaking neither of them has to bend too far outside of their personality there's a great great bit of chemistry between the two mm -hmm. of them i believe they talked about bringing sean connery back mm. at some point but now that he's retired i suppose that's gotcha. probably is he officially retired out of acting now that's what he said at least and i can't recall him being in a film no yeah like that makes sense why well, i haven't six, seen seven him seven years yeah. or whatever it's it's a shame the two of them together would be great. I wish they had gone that direction instead of what they did with Crystal oh Skull. Oh my god! But yeah, I can't I can't really get too <laughs> invested in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the relationship between a father and son can be beautiful and mm -hmm. also tragic. Mm -hmm. One of the best examples of that is Life Is Beautiful. Ah uh, yes, the story or film directed by Roberto Benigni mm -hmm. and starring Roberto Benigni mm -hmm. about a father and son who are caught again in the Nazis. Yes. Except this time they're put in a concentration yes. camp. And this is didn't he win Best Picture for this? I forget. No, he won Best Actor. Okay, that's right. Yes, and he his won freak, Best Foreign Film. Yes, his crazy freak out. I remember. Yes, where he walked Oscars. up on top of everyone's yeah, heads yeah. The, he he was nominated for best picture okay lost to shakespeare in love oh Ooh. also god who gave the director of shakespeare in love an oscar the uh, director didn't oh, yeah, get that's right yes who gave that but film anything he, other than here, a razzie well here yeah here's the most thing. unnecessary nude scene in any film ever yeah but it's also interesting to think that you know even if that hadn't won best mm -hmm. picture this still probably wouldn't have won best picture because best director that year which he was nominated for as well went to steven spielberg oh, or yeah. saving private oh, yeah. ryan oh yeah kind of seems like yeah. that should have won yeah. slam dunk yeah but you know one of those years it, nevertheless he won best actor and he was phenomenal i mm -hmm. mean i i love the movie it's so tragic so oh, God, yeah. unbelievable that this father basically tries to take his son outside of the concentration camp at least mentally yeah, make him think that it's yeah. not like this bleak march to mm -hmm. death that they really are sort of going in. Yeah. and it's 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 i mean so painful to watch by the yeah. end that and this is one of those situations where the father-son relationships is more about you know um trust it's mm -hmm. more about the fact that the son has to believe that his father, even if what he's telling him might not jive with what's going on, is for a good reason that his father... Well, he's you know, so young that he just doesn't even know better. Like, no, that's right. Yeah, yes, that's he's right. just like, he, he actually believes, you know, it's like, it's like fun or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Sadly, Look at those people turning uh, in dust. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw that. I, know, so much, just, I always go it's, morbid. It's, I'm sorry. I can't help it. It's sort of sad, though, that, you know, Roberto Benigni really hasn't done more because oh, he's yeah, so interesting. He went straight from that to that horrible Pinocchio movie. Yeah. He, he, he really Oof. hasn't really seemed to recapture that magic no. band. Someday, maybe he will. I, I think he's definitely a charming guy. Oh, yeah. He's definitely so. charmingly and talented. So. Again, within that comedy, not comedy, again, with that sort of like interesting father-son sort of mm -hmm. more upbeat sort of positive mm -hmm. relationship was american pie yes this is the relationship between jason biggs mm -hmm. jim and his dad eugene levy the only actor to be in every american pie movie yep including the, we're talking direct to video ones yeah. too yeah he's in all star, seven least, or something yeah there's seven there's or eight a, at least there's total. at least two or three i mean yeah, total. video yeah yeah so there's probably at least Seven. Seven. Yeah, at least seven. At least yeah, seven, if yeah. not more. And the relationship, you know, American Pie is a quirky film about mm -hmm. a bunch of friends trying to get laid, which is kind of funny to think about in terms of the guise of 
father son relationship. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Eugene Levy is like the perfect dad. Like he's so <laughs> supportive, no matter mm-hmm. what he does. You know, sees his son fucking a pie. Yep. Like no problem. <laughs> Gives him advice. Sees his son trying to have sex. You know, even yeah. though he's underage. Gives, Gives him advice. Off. Like yeah, it's just <laughs> no matter what, he's always there for his son. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, it's it's a really funny and yet beautiful sort of relationship. It's true because all the weird deviants that Jim gets into over the series are the kinds of things that would norm and we would expect society to push you farther and farther away from your parents especially any kind of you know gross thing happening now in comparison of an older generation that's the totally. quickest way to ge- put the generation gap up and it's just like he never acted shocked or well, he, as oh, you I said, shocked but never ashamed yeah exactly that's yeah. what i mean he definitely is never ashamed and he always just loved his son mm-hmm. and that's it's just a really admirable and desirable yeah sort of relationship with your father that I'm sure a lot of people wish they had. Oh, I mean, totally. Like, really... if, you could be the, if you could be as honest as, even if it's accidental, as he is with his father and get the kind of support and approval, man, I tell my dad all the horrible things I've done. And if anything, in some ways, he's sort, of, <laughs> he's sort of a father figure to a lot of people in the series. Yes, like, that's true. I mean, that's he's true. sort of a surrogate parent to a lot of people mm-hmm. because they see that he is just so understanding. Yeah, he's you just... know, if they need advice, they go mm-hmm. to him. And so. he's there. He's available. And he's funny, which yes. doesn't hurt as well. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> One of the more tough relationships between a father and son mm-hmm. was Road to Perdition, the yes. Sam Mendes film from the novel by, novel by let's see, Max Allen Collins and Richard Pierce Rayner. Mm. It's I believe three graphic novels. Okay, that they yes, did. That's only right, the yeah. first one was turned into a movie mm, at this mm-hmm. point, and it's about a son played by Tyler Hoechlin, okay. and Tom Hanks, mm-hmm. who the kid discovers his father is a hitman yes, for a right. mob, and ultimately the mob basically decides they have to kill him because he witnessed a murder, mm-hmm. and Tom Hanks takes him on the lam, trying to protect him. Mm-hmm. It's really Oh, interesting thing to think about because it's sort of that first instance where you discover your your dad is flawed. Mm-hmm. You discover that the world isn't quite as nice as you seem, and at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, your life is in danger. Yeah, like it is. It is a lot to take in as a yeah. kid, and to learn that not only is your fam- father like a consistent criminal, but that he's that you need to now go hide with him from worse criminals. Yep, and it's sort of interesting because you have to reconcile the fact that your dad is a murderer, but mm-hmm. at the same time, he's not necessarily a bad yeah. dad, exactly. per se. Like, yeah. He is a pretty good dad, and he mm-hmm. goes, you know, all the way, basically, for his son, you yeah, know. Yeah, above and beyond. <laughs> and it's it's interesting, like, I don't know how I, as if I were growing up, how I would necessarily reconcile mm. all that complexity. Oh, because, yeah. you know... You want to love your dad, but at the same time, I don't know how you get over him killing people, (laughs) but his sacrifice Mm -hmm. for you is a beautiful thing. I wonder if it makes it harder or easier to be a single parent in that situation. Like, if, as the kid, to have only one parent, is do you just say, well, they've done horrible things, but they're all I got, and latch on? Or is it harder because you don't have perspective? That's the kind of thing I wonder. Well, if you would go to mom, and mom could maybe justify it. Let's, let's spin this. His mom and his brother, I believe, are murdered because as part of that. Mm, so, it, w- right. how would you feel about your father if your father was indirectly, yeah, responsible, sort of, yeah, mm-hmm. for your brother and mom being murdered? Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's it's just a really what a com- surprise that father son relationships get tough. Really, really complicated. <laughs> really interesting. I'd be curious if they. I, I mean, I doubt they ever will. Yeah. Make the other two novels, Probably but not, I'd be yeah. very curious to sort of check those out because yeah. this one was so so beautiful and so moving, and the visuals and it are so profound. Mm-hmm. Like it won best cinematography, and it had Paul Newman nominated for best yeah, supporting actor. Yeah, he was the bad guy, wasn't he? Yep, he was the mafia mm-hmm. boss, mafioso. Yeah. But he lost to Chris Cooper, who was in Adaptation that year. Oh, that's a good movie, too. It's hard, hard to criticize that loss, yeah. you know, but Paul yeah. Newman is Paul Newman. <laughs> it's true. Eh, let him go back to making yeah. salad dressing. He's got plenty. He's got plenty going for him. <laughs> in the more sort of, again, in the more sort of complicated realm, mm-hmm. we also have Big Fish. Yeah. This I'm, I'm really glad we could talk about this. It's sort of... Place. A similar type of thing where a son doesn't really understand mm-hmm. his father, but this is sort of a, basically a story about a son coming to terms with his father. Yeah. In this case, we have Billy Crudup as the son, mm-hmm. and Albert Finney as oh, the senior man. version so of him, good. and Ewan McGregor as the 
story version yeah. of him being told. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, fantastical tale about a son who believes his dad to basically be a big liar mm. all his life that comes to realize that his dad lived an incredible life and maybe his imagination shouldn't be so closed yeah because there's more craziness to this world than you could ever believe this this is the movie i like to use to support your argument about wes anderson making the same movie mm -hmm. every time is i'm like look at this movie with tim burton there's a lot of things that are similar but it's also so vastly visually different at least to me and thematically different i feel than what tim burton usually does and i feel yeah. like that's almost half of my enjoyment out of it is that it, that watching it that it is a tim burton film you're like holy crap it doesn't look exactly like every other one it is a pretty dramatic change and you got to respect that i mean it's probably the last good tim burton movie i, I mean, would people can you. write in and say that they think differently but i can't think of one since then that no. i've really I would agree. Enjoyed. He's kind of also gone into a route of remaking other people's yeah. stuff. Yeah. And this, sure. granted, this is based on a book by Daniel mm -hmm. Wallace, Big Fish, a novel of mythic proportions. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's one thing to turn can turn an existing book mm -hmm. into something versus you know taking something like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and sort of remaking the book mm -hmm. slash movie of that or Alice in Wonderland yeah. remaking that. And I, I think it's interesting also as far as the father son relationship because in this case you have. A son who's already thinks pretty badly of his father mm -hmm. in the beginning. And you have this, like, duel where the story is being told from the dad's perspective. You're seeing it how the dad wanted it remembered, so everything works out. He's happy, he's saccharine, he's always smiling. His character is relatively perfect. Totally. And then you get, you have moments where you get to see Billy Crudup reflecting on it. But a lot of times it seems like the buildup of the stories as they go, he has to just kind of react to on his own. You don't get, he he has to take that all in like we are and make his own decisions based on what, how he already feels about his dad. And we also, we also got to know, you know, his dad is dying. Yes. And so yes. he's got a reason to kind of maybe believe that he might be telling the truth this well, time. Well, no, it's also sort of like more like his dad he can either hate his dad mm, to the yes. end, or he can sort of come to some sort of understanding yes. of who his dad was. That's true. And perhaps that not everything he knew was exactly the way he perceived it. Mm -hmm. It sort of adds to that complexity of who someone is versus what you know about somebody. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's really interesting because a lot of people have complicated relationships with their fathers yes. or parents. And this is... An and this exam. one deals with that with death in that mix, which I think is an interesting thing to bring into a, any kind of father-son relationship yep. story to have, you know, death looming or imminent or present. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. Another interesting, more quirky take <laughs> down the father-son route yes. is Finding Nemo. Mm -hmm. We're obviously talking an animated film about fish here, <laughs> yes. so this is extrapolating a little bit on that theme of father and son. <laughs> Especially based on clownfish biology, as I think I said before. Yes. Don't they become moms or something? Yeah, if, if there's lack of a mother present, the male will actually turn into a mother, so technically the dad in Finding Nemo biologically would become a female fish. There might be. Maybe they just didn't talk about the mom. We don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe she had something else going on at that point. Maybe, maybe they just were like, you know what? The change is going to take place, but he's still going to sound like Albert Brooks. So maybe it's supposed yes. to be a female fish all the time. But the father is Marlin. <laughs> yes. The son is Nemo. Yes. The son gets taken away, basically. Yes. And so he goes on a big search to mm -hmm. save his son. It's kind of, I mean, granted, it's not necessarily all about the relationship through the movie, mm -hmm. but it's sort of about him coming to terms with their relationship yes. during the movie mm -hmm. because he sort of realizes how much overly protective yeah, he's sheltered. been about and how he needs to sort of let Nemo grow up mm -hmm. because he's so overly protective yes. of him. And, you know, it's it's really, I mean, it's a fun adventure. It's very funny. It's mm -hmm. Pixar. I mean, yeah, how could exactly. they do wrong? It's Andrew <laughs> Stanton. I mean, yeah. You did Wally, so yeah. you know the guy's got chops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... It's it's I mean it's interesting also because this is from the father's perspective. Yes. Usually a lot that's a lot a of the point. time it's from the son's perspective mm -hmm. towards the father. I mean, granted you do get some father and son simultaneous stuff, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a la one of like a freaky Friday type mm -hmm. thing. They've done a lot of those father yeah. son type movies. Vice versa. Yeah, exactly. 
But those the, you get a little bit of father perspective, a little bit mm-hmm. of son perspective. But usually, it's son towards father yeah. is one of the driving forces. Mm-hmm. In this case of you know, Godfather, etc., mm-hmm. are that way. So to have a much more father towards son directed film is really interesting. It is. I mean, I guess Parenthood might be another one that's sort of mm-hmm. more of a parental one. That yeah. way. Usually, you have a, a kid in some way trying to live up to either their father's image or their father's acceptance or approval or things yes. like that. So it's interesting to have it the other way around, where it's a father kind of realizing what he's doing to his kid and realizing he has to stop those that i mean it's great one best animated feature Mm -hmm. probably should have been nominated for best picture i'm just saying (laughs) just throwing that out there but you know it uh it's a great great film pixar i mean arguably one of their best films and Mm -hmm. they've done a lot of great films Mm -hmm. so talk about that this friday though we're talking about the fort 15th. 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 Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's My Boy. Mm Mm-hmm. Coming out, Adam Sandler plays the father of Andy Samberg. Estranged father, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, And he raised him until his 18th birthday. Now, not after seeing him for years, he comes crashing back, I believe, for his wedding. Yeah, I think so. Or at least an engagement of some sort has been announced, and he hears about that and comes back or something. And, you know... Uh, watching this trailer, I'm, I'm no, I, like I'm okay with Ed, Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm not yeah. a, the biggest fan of him. Yeah, uh, his movie roles have been questionable. Yes, and Adam Sandler especially has been very questionable. I mean, just mm-hmm. go with it. it was mm-hmm. a, meh, not terrible, but not good. Jack and Jill was probably the worst awful. movie of last year. Definitely in the conversation. As far and, as big blockbusters. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, things like Grown Ups, etc. have been yeah. very mm. meh, meh at yeah. best. Yeah. So he really, you know, he's done some very interesting stuff in his career. Rain Over Me, Punch Drunk Love. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, I don't know Punch why he's really sort of... Like just but, given up and gone back to that well. Yeah, I mean, well, and he's not, it's not even like he's humor. making so, so much money doing that, that he even funny people was like... Gosh, what five years ago yeah, or you, something? It, it's sad if you look at people like him and uh, Eddie Murphy as falls in this as well. But if you look at mm-hmm. Jack and Jill's, like, I mean, Jack and Jill. If you look at uh, Adam Sandler's like biggest grossing movies compared to like you know his biggest bombs, they're yeah. so they're so different. It's it's like, it's, just, it's just such a shame. And like the trailer, he looks ridiculous. Yeah. I can't help but feel this is venturing more towards that Jack and Jill territory. Yeah. Andy Samberg actually looks relatively good, but yeah. I guess he's playing the straight man. Yeah, he's I kind mean, of being so, the normal guy. And I, I like that change since he usually plays sort of the wacky character. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, and there's a gigantic. I mean, and this isn't surprising when you pull Adam Sandler tries to make a movie. But there's a gigantic plethora of supporting cast comedians in this movie. Like, if you actually look at the people involved, not as like a major role, but just that are in it and the cameos, there's just there's tons of comedians yeah. that are going to be involved in this. I and mean, you got people. Look at like some of these supporting characters: Vanilla Ice as yeah. himself, James Caan. Mm. Milo Ventimiglia, Will Forte, mm-hmm. Leighton Meester. It's it's a H. John Benjamin. So a whole well. screwy like, group yeah. of people. The one thing that I really think it has going for us is that it was directed by Sean Anders, who directed Sex Drive, which is mm. one of the more underrated films. I believe of like two thousand eight or whatever that mm-hmm. came in. Really, really fun little film. I can't believe he was doing this. I mean, I guess if you get the opportunity to direct Adam Sandler, you're really <laughs> willing to sort of curb your morals or yeah. beliefs or interests or whatever. I mean, even with counter-programming, I can't see this d- doing anything but falling underneath the Prometheus wave. Yeah, like, I, I don't think it'll do. Yeah. Unless Prometheus is just god-awful. but <laughs> Which I highly, highly doubt. doubt yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, let us know your thoughts about yeah. father-son movies. And join us tomorrow as we talk about... Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. in honor of Rock of Ages, coming yeah. out this week again. And you can let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm-hmm. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm-hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, mm-hmm. phone number 323-761-9842, mm-hmm. on iTunes, Roku, Miro, Blip. Check in. Get glue. And stay with us tomorrow. See you then. 
2000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.